So I bought some of these little uh, joysticks. Let's get this on. Little joysticks on um, Amazon. They're like the old PlayStation controllers. Uh, basically, they're an XY Cartesian um, input device, I guess. And then it's just a variable resistor, variable resistor, and then a um, little push button. Uh, so yeah, I've, oh, no, I've just wired these up to the the five volt ground, and then I've put the two analog um, the wipers of the variable resistor to analog one and two, or zero and one rather, on the um, Arduino. I've just got a just a mega. Um, and then I've put the um, the toggle switch into input two. Um, so yeah, let's see what we can do and uh, how we can code this. Um, so first thing is I'm gonna <coughs> use the Arduino to um, retrieve those values and then send them over serial, and then we're gonna jump into processing and display those on the screen in in a way that kind of makes a bit more. Um, bit more sense so first thing uh, serial um, so I will dot begin serial dot begin and then we need to give it a, um, a speed we'll just go with a basic 9600 for now um, then we need to do some pin modes so uh, let me. I can't type or spell. So pin mode of um, A zero. We're going to set that to an input. Uh, P U T. Great. Uh, and then we also need um, A one is also going to be input, and then pin two is going to be an input uh, for pin two because we're using um, that switch. You can look at this up online, but basically it needs a pull-up resistor. Um, so we can do that using the Arduino. We don't need to add another pull-up resistor. Um, so you go input underscore pull-up, um, and then you use the internal pull-up resistor within um, the the AT Mega chip. Cool. So um, let's grab some X values. X value. Uh, we're going to store those integers, and we're going to analog read from, I assume it's going to be A0, I'm not really sure which one's which, uh, and then we're going to do the same again for the Y values, um, which is going to come from A1. Uh, we're also going to read the, um, the button, see if it's pressed, so pressed, uh, and that is going to be a digital read, uh, D-I-G-I-T-L, digital read on pin 2, and I need to make these all equal because that's not going to work. Mm -mm -mm. Um, great, and then we're going to chuck them out over serial. So serial, -E serial dot print, uh, and then we're going to send the value. So first, we're going to go. We're going to send them as cop yeah, comma separated variables. So x val, and then we're going to send the y val, um, and then we're going to send the pressed. So uh, that'll be the y val, and then. Um, so press capital P. Um, this will be the last one, so we're going to print line, um, so it knows, and then we're going to add the commas in as well. So print um, like so. So we'll copy that and we'll stick it in there. So comma separated variables x, y, and then z. Awesome. So let's upload. No, let's add a delay in first. So delay and we'll stick 100 uh, microsecond delay in there just because otherwise it's going to keep refreshing and get really annoying so let's upload that to the Arduino awesome so I've got my code on you can I don't know if you can see it's got the TX light so it's transmitting serial back let's have a look in the serial monitor and bingo we are getting three values comma separated variables which are down here. So if I move, if I move this now, we should see those variables change. There's zero, well, almost zero zero. And if I press the button, it changes that third, var third value. 
Awesome. So we are getting serial into um, into the computer from from the joystick. So you could process this directly on the the Arduino and do something else with it, um, or you could use it um, on the computer as an input device. It's up to you really what you're going to do. But I'm going to display it in um, processing. So processing has a, um, a serial li serial library. Um, so what we can do is we can import that into this sketch uh, processing dot serial um, dot star. That's how we import library, and then we need to call it so serial and create a port. Um, you can find examples on how to do much more with serial online. Uh, you can also find out how to spell it correctly, which would would help. Um, so we're going to use a serial port um, called my port to, to to access the serial, um, which means that in the setup we're going to need to do some stuff. So my port um, new serial uh, this you can find how to do this code um, on the interwebs. This list um, we need to tell it which port we want to use. Um, so if there's multiple serial ports, obviously you can you can use different serial ports for different things. Um, I've got two on this, so one's the Arduino and one's the local on the machine. So um, I'm not sure which one it's going to be, but I'm going to go with one and hope for the best. It'll be zero or one, they're zero indexed. Um, and then we need to buffer the, the data. So we're going to buffer it until we see um, a character come through, uh, and that character is going to be the new line character. Um, they need to be single quotation marks, I have a feeling. Um, buffer until, there we go, no. What about buffer until one one L? Oh no, no N. There we go. Um, so that's all we need to uh, set up, I think. And then we need a uh, another void section, which is going to be a serial event. Um, this basically will get called every time data comes in. So serial event, um, we need to tell it which port, so serial, 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 um, my port. Uh, and then we can put some code into here. Um, so what do we want it to do? We're going to store the incoming string, because it's a string of data over serial. Um, we're going to need to store that into a um, well, we need to store it in a string. Uh, so let's define a string, string, and we're going to call it the in string because it's an input string. So in string. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that string and we're going to dump into it the string from the serial. So my port dot. Uh, read serial until um, and we need to stick that n in there again. Um, so now we've read serial ser I, I, I need to learn how to type serial and no, that's wrong. It should be read string until there we go um, great so now we've got the string and then we want to go well with the string um, so if in if in string um, is not equal to null so basically as long as we've got data um, we're going to trim off the white space first so in string string um, so we just use the trim function uh, in string, I really cannot type in string uh, equals in there. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to explode that that string um, that's called separated variables. We're going to explode that 
into the into an array. So we need to um, do an array first. So uh, let me see how we do an array data. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go data equals, uh, and then the explode function is called split. Uh, we'll call that on the in string, um, and we're going to separate it out by uh, commas. So we've pulled our serial string in, we've separated the variables out into this array called data, uh, and now we're going to need. Yeah, now we can actually draw some stuff with this data. So uh, canvas size of 600 by 600. And then what we can do is we can grab that, the the data coming in. So Arduino is a 1024-bit um, analog read resolution. No, it's 10-bit, so it's 1024 variables or values that it possibly can be. So 0 through to uh, 1023. So what we're going to do um, to draw those on 600 is divide the input variables by 2. So what we'll do is we're going to make an int x, uh, x pos this, and we're going to grab that from um, the string which is now stored in the array. So we're going to convert to an integer using the int function. Um, so we'll go data 0, um, and we'll divide that by 2. Um, so that should is that right? No. Let's put the divider two outside. That's probably more sensible. Uh, and then we'll do exactly the same for the Y. Um, so the Y position is data one. Um, and then we'll we'll call the int pressed as well. Uh, int equals int uh, data to and um, so we'll just chuck that into a, a, a variable as well okay a couple of warnings but they're not that important um, and then we'll draw um, so what should we do we'll set our color to something and then we'll draw an ellipse you know, ipse uh, an ellipse needs an x position, x position, a y position, and um, two radii. I don't know what they're called. Probably should know this. Uh, we'll just call them ten. Uh, okay, and then I think we should be able to run this. Yes. So, let me grab it. It's popped off on my other screen. So here we have our our sketch, but nothing on it. So hang on, we have a an issue. So error opening serial port incorrect serial port right. Then we change the zero to. It. Or one to a zero. Let's see if we get the right zero report this time. Aha! Right, it's opened up my other screen again. So here is the uh, diagram, and then if I move the joystick around, you should see the dot now moving around. So I'm just moving it left, right, up, and down. And if I move it at 45 degrees, oh, it's a little bit difficult to do, but you can see it. It's moving around, moving around the place, which is cool. So we've now got our data in and we're now processing it, um, which is ideal. So now what we need to do, it's great. I mean, from here on, you could do whatever you want to do, but I think it'd be useful to draw a circle uh, and see where on that circle we actually are, are getting, because obviously the joystick moves in this, this circular motion. So you kind of would expect a, a circle to appear. Um, I have a feeling because it's two just variable resistors that that's not going to be the case. Um, but let's let's draw it in processing, 
and then we can actually see what, what we are getting. So um, we've got our data in, we've divided by two, we've got our canvas size of 600. So I think maybe what we'll do first um, is we're going to draw a uh, an ellipse, like a background ellipse. So we'll change this color. Um, I have no idea what color this is going to be. So 102 and then none of that. Um, let's change Let's stick it starting in the middle. Uh, and we'll make it 512 because that's half of our value. So let's see what this gives us. Awesome. Um, and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move our because um, this obviously isn't in the center at the moment and it should be in the center uh, I'm assuming that actually let's have a look at our serial values oh yeah can't do that because I've got the serial port open in two places so 540 525 so they're roughly halfway so I would expect that dot to appear in the middle um, so 600 minus 512 leaves us with 88, divide that by 2 is 44, so we need to apply an offset of 44 uh, to these values. So let's do that. Um, I'm also going to change this colour, so if pressed equals, uh, it should be double equals, equals 1, then um, we're going to go for that orangey colour I guess, uh, else we're going to go for a different colour um, and we're going to go for the colour of green. So, uh, um, let's add a couple of those in green, so R, G, so let's stick that at 200, and 2, why not? So now if the button gets pressed, this background ellipse is going to change colour. Uh, and in the meantime, our small ellipse is going to come over the front, showing our position. Awesome. Okay, maybe I've got those values running the wrong way. And it's not liking that, so... Maybe I've done this a bit wrong. So if equals 1, there we go. Awesome. So now, if you when we press the button, it changes colour, and as we move around, you'll see the uh, little dot move around as well, which is good. So this is what I was thinking. Um, actually, let me draw some lines on here as well, uh, so you can see the where the x and y axis should be. So stroke, stroke, S T R O K. -E. Stroke, uh, we'll set this to 255, which is just white. Then we'll draw a couple of lines. So, um, 344, 300, uh, be 556, I think. That's one of the lines. And then we'll do another one where we swap stuff over. And this one will be 44, 300, 556, 300. There we go. So this will give us an X and a Y line, um, vertical and horizontal, with a point in the middle where. Oh, no, it won't. 544. Ah. Oh, it should be a 300. Um, so it'll give us a cross in the middle that we should be aligning our centre with. Uh, I don't think it's that yet. It's not. It's not that accurate. But you can see now it's in the middle. I can go up. 
and if I press it down hard enough and so I can go up and the, the little ball will go up I can go right and it will go right left goes left and down goes down and you can see it following those lines if I try and go at 45 degrees you, it's difficult to do but you can see I go well outside of this circle um, which is okay if you just want X and Y coordinates um, but if you want like polar coordinates where you get an angle um, and then you get like a, a radius, not a radius, yeah it is a radius you get an angle and you get a radius um, this isn't exactly going to work so if you were implementing this in the game you'd have to take into account that if you're pressing a diagonal you might be getting more movement than if you were just going left or right it wouldn't keep a uniform speed as you as you go around so say for instance you were going forwards and then you went right a little bit while the distance between that right and the origin is bigger than just going forwards so you'd end up speeding up so if you were trying to do like a car driving game that might not be uh, a great application but then again would you really be buying maybe pound maybe pound 50 joysticks off of ebay or amazon probably not anyway i will put this code in the um video description the processing code you can write your own sketch for the arduino um <coughs> yeah if you like this please like the video feel free to subscribe i would probably i might come back to this actually and see if i can solve the problem where the where the radius is not equal to one as it goes round if that makes sense so subscribe and i'm sure i'll have more videos on this in the future thanks for watching